Desert Race at Heidi Park is one of the smallest intimate accelerators. This ride is routinely overshadowed by the model's larger coasters, but this one actually does some things better. Mainly, it offers a more complete layout. Find out why this is actually a really good launch coaster in this review. Intamin debuted the Accelerator Coaster back in 2002. The hallmark of this model was a hydraulic launch. This method produced some of the fastest accelerations of any coaster. The model has been plagued by reliability issues and none have been built since 2010. In fact, I don't even think Intamin offers this model anymore and some have closed in recent years. But in the 2000s, Intamin sold 14 of these hydraulic launch coasters and two of them are still operated by Merlin theme parks. Alton Towers opened Rita back in 2005. At the time, this was the world's smallest accelerator coaster. Rita was a fraction of the size of the first three, primarily due to the height restrictions imposed in the British theme park, but it was well received by locals for the intense launch and sense of speed. So when Heidi Park needed a new coaster in 2007, it's not too surprising they add an accelerator coaster of their own, and Desert Race would be a near clone. It was 7 feet shorter, but 2 miles per hour faster than Rita, and the layout was nearly identical. Both rides consist of a series of overlapping S-hills and low turns. However, Desert Race featured a modified finale. Rita's fourth hill is a hop into the final brake run. The coaster then slowly crawls back to the station. On Desert Race, the fourth hill is a full bunny hill with a trim break in the descent that saps you of most of your momentum. You then have a slightly faster return to the station. While Desert Race doesn't dominate the skyline like some accelerator coasters, it still looks quite good. As the name suggests, the ride is themed to a high-speed joyride through a desert. The track is black with yellowish supports. The red and blue trains contrast nicely with this to stand out. Then there is a giant helicopter above the launch track that doubles as the operator booth. The station itself is pretty bare appearance-wise, but it does have a catchy soundtrack that will get you amped up for your ride. I think it's one of the more underrated coaster soundtracks out there. The ride usually has a bit of a line. It routinely has had a 30-ish minute wait in my visits. Compared to the other hydraulic launch coasters, this one does seem to be more reliable. Maybe it's because of its smaller size. I haven't seen it go down for any mechanical issues in my visits to Heidi, nor have I heard about it having major issues like some of the other accelerator coasters. However, you do need to be careful on a rainy day. This coaster will not run while it's raining, so if rain is in the forecast, ride it right away if you see it open. Desert Race features two trains, and I've always seen both in use. Each train is comprised of five cars, and each car seats four riders in two rows of two, so the trains can accommodate a maximum of 20 people, and they are usually fully loaded. That's because of the station setup. At the end of the queue line, there's a turnstile letting exactly 20 people into the station to fill each seat on the ride, and if there's even a single seat left over, the attendant will aggressively call for singles. This definitely keeps the line moving. However, it can be tricky if you want a specific seat. It's first come, first served, and the attendants don't seem to let you wait an extra cycle for a row, even if you ask nicely. Fortunately, the seat doesn't matter too much in this one. Like many accelerator coasters, I do think the front is the best seat, but it's only a little bit better, mainly for the blast of wind on the launch. The other elements feel pretty identical throughout the ride. Most people will take the front first, so if you want that seat, you'll likely need to be at the front of the turnstile to get it. You also need to move quickly. There are double sided cubbies for your loose articles. If you stop here, people are going to pass you. It's also worth noting that even if you walk to the row you want, the attendants will sometimes move smaller groups and single riders around to make sure larger parties can sit in consecutive rows. Desert Race's station is set up with separate load and unload platforms. This definitely helps the crew dispatch the trains as quickly as possible. They can check the restraints quickly. The biggest limiter seems to be the launch position. Desert Race is one of those hydraulic launch coasters that takes off directly from the station so the train and the unload platform cannot advance until after the train ahead of it has cleared the first hill. This ride features over-the-shoulder harnesses, much like those on Six Flags Great Adventures King Ka. 
you have a thick cylindrical portion that rests over your lap, and then you have hard straps going over your shoulders. I know the latter get quite a bit of attention from coaster enthusiasts, but they really don't bother me because Desert Race is pretty darn smooth and free of headbanging. I'd prefer just a lap bar for the added freedom, but these restraints are okay. Once you're secured, the launch sequence begins. You roll backwards as the train engages with the catch car, and racing lights ahead of you blink in sequence. And when those lights all turn green, you take off like a rocket. You go from 0 to 63 miles per hour, or 100 kilometers per hour, in just 2.4 seconds. While the larger accelerator coasters undoubtedly have more power to them, this launch is no slouch. It accelerates faster than most magnetic launch coasters, especially because it's occurring from a standstill. You really get yanked down that launch track. You then zoom around a low turn. It has a bit of a shuffle to it, and really it's the only slightly rough part in the ride, but it's still a great element between its speed and the decent sustained positive G's. You then fly over the first and largest of three S hills. Everyone gets a decent ejector pop as you crest it. You then twist back to the ground and fluidly transition into another low turn. This one is even more forceful than the first, applying even more positive G's. This leads into another S hill. This one is a sweet head chopper of the previous one, as you shoot beneath it. Then everyone will get some weak ejector airtime with a pinch of laterals. This leads to another, you guessed it, low turn. It's not as intense as the first two, but it still has some force to it. You then fly over a small S hill. Those in back will get a good pop of airtime. It does weaken as you move forwards, but it's still solid in any row. And then everyone gets a dash of laterals as well. You then head into the fourth and final hill. Everyone will sharply lift out of their seat for an instant, but you quickly come back down when the trim brake engages at the top of the descent. It's a bummer the brake couldn't be placed lower so you could get the full airtime experience here. You then slowly twist around the maintenance shed and head back to the unload platform, ending the 2,133 foot or 650 meter long coaster. Now, Desert Race is short, there's no denying that. You have approximately 25 seconds of ride time from the moment you launch until you hit that trim in the fourth hill. But it still feels like a more complete ride than some of the other accelerator coasters because it packs in more elements. Some of them quite literally go up a top hat, back down, that's it. You have four hills and desert race that dish out air time, plus some forceful turns. So what would I rate desert race? I would give this intimate accelerator coaster an 8 out of 10. Heidi Park's only launch coaster is a good one. While the bigger accelerator coasters feature better launches, this one is still well above average and extremely thrilling. Then I really like this ride's pacing. The ride carries its speed start to finish. It feels like you never slow down, even as you're cresting the S hills. And every element until the brake run offers airtime or positives. Just because this ride doesn't have the stats of its larger brethren, doesn't mean it's bad. I genuinely like this coaster, and I think it's pretty underrated. So those are my thoughts on Desert Race at Heidi Park. What are your thoughts on this hydraulic launch coaster? Do you think this ride does enough between the launch and layout? Let me know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.